Let's start by giving our praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles, uh, through the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth, honors to the brothers, doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, one-third of the twelve tribes who are going to receive salvation. And when we say one-third, meaning one-third of all twelve tribes who are going to receive salvation by returning back to the Most High right now before it's too late. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. This lesson is going to be titled, Remember the Help from Heaven, and this is number 11. So again, remember the help from heaven, this is number 11. I think I'm going to title it, The Pillar of Cloud by Day, Pillar of a Fire by Night. So we go here, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Things written aforetime, meaning things written before time. So the Lord had these events happen in the past just so they can be recorded, just so we could read it here in the future and learn from it. And that what? Um... We will be comforted because we will have hope. Because we come into the time, Jacob's trouble, a great tribulation, a time of trouble such as never was, that there is no escape. There's going to be no hope except you be of the elect. And see, the Lord had different things happen when he stepped in to help our people. And it was recorded so we know what the Lord did before. So now what? We know what the, we know what to hope for. Our hope is going to lie in what's in the scriptures. The same merciful acts that the Lord did for our people, He's going to do those same merciful acts here now. And again, this is going to be a time of trouble such as never was. So what? We're going to need help, way more help than we've ever received from the Lord before. So the Lord about to step in in a major, major, major way for his elect here in these last days. Because the help of the Lord for us to survive is going to have to exceed the trouble we going through. And this trouble that we about to go through is about to far exceed anything that's ever happened since the beginning of creation. So this help it's, a, it's about to be out of this world. And that's what we hope in. We're not going to hope in nothing that lies outside of the scriptures because that's vain hope. It ain't going to happen. And that's what the rest of the world going to do who don't know the scriptures. They're not going to know what to pray for. They're not going to know what to hope in. So now when we get the next precept, uh, Luke 21 and 20, because again, we're coming to the time of Jacob's trouble. And what's one of the main things that's going to happen? There's going to be a complete lockdown of the streets here in America, really the whole world. But America, which is Babylon, is a focus. And that's going to be what? Through martial law. You're going to have all these foreign troops, illegal immigrants, UN troops locking this place down, along with purging, rioting, famine, pestilence breaking and entering every crime that you can imagine all oh, that's going to be happening at once so they're going to have to lock down the streets of America so that's why this reads when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies then know that the desolation thereof is not and this is not talking about ancient physical Jerusalem but the people of Jerusalem the 12 tribes and where are we mainly located here in America in the inner cities. So this is saying when you see the inner cities compassed. Compassed means surrounded with armies, UN troops, American military, military vehicles, military equipment, drone technology, etc. 
then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea, meaning the inner cities, where they coop us up at, flee to the mountains. Meaning what? Flee to the wilderness. This means leave the cities. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Meaning those who are in the cities, leave the city. When you see Esau and, and these immigrants setting up shop, getting ready to lock down the city, let them that are in the countries and let not them that are in the countries enter there too. So this is saying if you're in the countryside, if you're already in the wilderness, if you're already outside of the city, don't enter into the city because it's going to be a death zone. But we're going to read it in the NLT. And when you shall see Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem, the inner cities surrounded by armies, then you will know that the time of its destruction has arrived. Then those in Judea, the inner cities, must flee to the hills. That's where you get the sand, run for the hills, meaning the wilderness. Those in Jerusalem must get out. If you're in a city, you must get out. And those out in the country should not return to the city because it's going to be a straight madhouse. It's going to be a death zone. And when we hit Isaiah 59 and 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, that's them um, surrounding the cities to lock them down. They're going to surround the cities. They're going to set up shop. Then they're going to come in like a flood. They're going to sweep the streets with every kind of weapon imaginable. AI weapons, AI robots, killer drones, mechanical dogs, flash grenades biological warfare but when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him now we gonna get this word standard in the blue letter bible in hebrew strong's h 5127 noose <clears throat> noose Strong's H, 5127. Noose. Noose. So the Lord is going to lift up a standard, meaning he's going to make it that we flee, that we're able to escape some way, somehow. And how it's going to play out on an individual basis is going to vary from, from individual to individual. But that standard will be lifted that we may flee the cities. But it don't stop there. Just because you're not in the city don't mean you're safe. And that's the mind frame of you Americans. Everybody's saying, um, move to the suburbs. Get out, of, get out of the city. You know, get you somewhere in the country where you can retreat to. Just because you're not in the city don't mean you're safe. The dangers would just be beginning. So, not only is we going to need a standard lifted that we may flee the cities, but we're going to need that standard to be lifted continuously unto our salvation. Even when we're in the wilderness, the country, the hills, the mountains. So the Lord is going to allow us to escape ultimately. And it says to put to flight. To put to flight who? The enemy. Their military, their technology. But see... What the Lord is about to do in the instance of this lesson ain't nothing new. So when we come to the book of Exodus 33 and 2, this is after the children of Israel escaped the land of Egypt. And now what is America in Revelation the 11th chapter? It's called spiritual Egypt. That's why the pyramid is on the back of the dollar. That's why they say all 12 tribes collectively been oppressed for right around 400 years. This is spiritual Egypt, Egypt part two. And when the Lord said that what? That we must flee to the mountains. We must flee to the wilderness. That's the equivalent of our people making it out of Egypt. And they was in the wilderness. So the Lord is taking us out of Egypt. Not completely out of America, but out of the hot spot. That being the cities. 
So this this time when we flee the cities and we in the wilderness, that's that's likened to us being in the wilderness coming up out of Egypt. Okay, so this is the Lord telling them what he's about to do. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. So this angel, I believe, first appeared in maybe Exodus, the third, well, you could say the 12th chapter with the Passover, but Exodus 13. And we're going to show this angel in Exodus, the 13th chapter. But see what the angel did first. When we go to this word, lift up a standard, it helped our people escape. By what? By leading us and to put some of our enemies to flight. Now, we're going to get what this angel is. So the Lord was sending an angel before thee to lead us into a land flowing with milk and honey. So that same angel and many more angels are going to be before us coming out of this Egypt, coming out of America, coming out the inner cities. So the same angel and many more, well, many more angels are going to be leading us because the Lord is about to um, deliver a lot more people. So when we hit Exodus 13 to 20, and they took their journey from Succoth and camped, and camped at Etham in the edge of the wilderness. So this is when they fled up out of Egypt. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud to lead them by the way and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. <clears throat> so pillar of a cloud, why, why was it referred to as that? Because it flew amongst the clouds. Let's you know that this was a UFO. What the world calls a UFO, what the Bible calls a chariot of the Lord. So it was likened unto a cloud because it flew amongst the clouds. And it gave them shade from the elements, from the sunlight, from the rain, etc. And by night in a pillar of a fire to give them light. So it gave them light when it was dark out. Because being in the wilderness with no lights, it's pitch black. So they needed that light. But that was that chariot with the world cause the UFO. Verse 22, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of a fire by night from the people. So that, that chariot, that UFO, it stayed with the people day and night. It didn't move without them and it never left them. But see, that's big because it's going to be many chariots guiding many brothers and you elect out there. Lord, wouldn't be part of that. And, and, and that's going to be a sight to see. To what? To give a shade, you know, from the sun. Hey, and it will block the rain. It'll block the snow. That's going to be a big help. And then that night, it will also block rain, sleet, snow, and whatever else it, 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 it blocks, but it'll be sort of a night light. And, and that's going to be, uh, and that's going to be a big help because we seen the rain when it rained for hours over here, you get flooded out, drenched, soaked, and that's very miserable. That rain gonna be breaking people's minds. The hail, the snow, that's gonna be breaking people's minds. And imagine everybody getting rained out. They miserable, drenched, soaking, itching. But we walking dry through the rain because we got this pillar of a cloud, a UFO, a chariot flying right over us. Uh by day and night. It's gonna be blackouts. People ain't going to know where they're going, but we're going to have a nightlight, that pillar of a fire by night, that same UFO, that same chariot, you know, guiding us. So also, too, we're going to hit Nehemiah, um, chapter 9, we're going to get 18 through 21. 
Yeah, when they had made them a molten calf and said, This thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt. So this is letting you know the time frame this is talking about in the book of Exodus or somewhere in there. Yeah, Exodus and had raw great provocations. They provoked the Lord. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsook us them not in the wilderness. See, the Lord not going to forsake us in the wilderness when we run to the hills, the mountains, the countries, the forest, wherever we may be, because that's the Lord's mercy. We're not going to be alone out there. And when you think about these scriptures, that's going to be a great comfort and it's going to give us hope. Because imagine leaving everything behind, your, your sense of security, safety, your comfortabilities, and you out there with no lights, no flashlight. You don't want to light no fire. You out there with grizzly bears, newly created creatures, cannibals, rapists, drone technology, AI robots, all kind of stuff out there. We're not going to be alone. Yet, in thy manifold mercies, for, forsook is them not in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of a fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. So some of us, maybe all of us, going to have these chariots with the world calls UFOs guiding us day and night. But as we go on, it reads, Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheld is not thy manna from their mouth, and gave them water for their thirst. We're going to cover that in another lesson. Yea, forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. So this lets you know that for forty years, that pillar of a cloud and fire, that UFO, in the scriptures called a chariot, it was with them 40 years, day and night. It didn't leave their sight, not once. You know, uh, that that's beautiful work on the Lord's part. But 40 years is a long time, and that chariot was there. When we flee these inner cities, the Lord not going to have us on the run for 40 years this time. It might not even be 40 months. It could be 40 months. It could be 40 days. Jacob's struggle not going to be too long. Because why? Well, when you hit Matthew 24 and 22, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. So when we leave our house, these cities, wherever the Lord take us to, it's, it's not going to be long. So if the Lord sent the chariot, to watch over the people for 40 years. Well, what's 40 months? What's a year? A year and a half. That's that's nothing. The Lord got us covered. Because that angel watched over us for, for 40 years. That's a whole generation. And then some. So the Lord watching over us this short period of time, Jacob's trouble, it's going to be nothing. And so the scriptures say the Lord's hand is not shortened that he can't save. But when we hit the book of 2 Maccabees chapter, uh, chapter 15, we're going to hit verse 7. But Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord will help him. And we got that same confidence. If you made it this far in the lesson, that means you invested in this truth. And, and you got enough faith and believe enough to make it this far in the lesson. So what? Well, we all got that same confidence. And that's what these lessons are for, to, to boost our confidence, to boost our faith, to, to constantly remind us what the Lord did before so we could teach about what he's going to do again. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them. Because remember, the enemy going to come in like a flood. And then what? The Lord going to lift up that standard. But to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven. That's that standard being lifted. That help that's coming from heaven. And this lesson is talking about the many pillar of a cloud and fire. 
the, the, the pillar of clouds and fires being a chariot that's going to be guiding and, and overshadowing the elect. And now to expect the victory and aid which should come to them from the almighty. So the, the moment we leave our house, the moment we leave these cities, we're not going to be alone. The cherry is already out there waiting on us. And it's a very good possibility, you know, for the lake, the cherries are already over us right now, over our household, or if we in our car, wherever we may be. But when you go through these times of trouble, what did it say? It said, it said, expect the victory and aid, expect the Lord to step in, expect the help, expect it, be looking out for it. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets with uh, putting them in the mind of the battles, they had won the four. So our people got the victory over ancient Egypt. We're going to get that same victory, but an even greater victory over America, which is spiritual Egypt. The, the elects, um, they about to overcome every obstacle out there. All right. Putting them in the mind of the battles they had won before, he made them more cheerful. So, yeah, this lesson is encourage our people to remember the help from heaven that we received before. And again, that pillar of a cloud by day, it guided us through the day. Our people was in the wilderness 40 years. You know, no shade, no cover from dust storms, rain, whatever may, may have come. But guess what? They, they was protected from the elements and the weather. They had a, a whole night light in the sky to guide them. And then that same pillar of a cloud and fire, that's where the manna came from. The quail. I believe the Lord allowed Moses to strike a rock. Water came out. That was by that chariot. But that's another lesson. But we also going to hit Ecclesiastes. Um, actually, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. That's the pillar of a cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. That's that, that what the world calls a UFO, the chariot of the Lord that the Lord sent before us. And, and many, many angels about to be dispatched on our behalf and all pass through the sea. Well, now all of our people are going to get the privilege of passing under the cloud these times. They're not going to get the privilege to have a, a chariot flying overhead, protecting them and leading them. Only the elect. And then even here, you know, Paul was reminding our nation the help that they had received before. And we performing that same act today, reminding the people of our nation what the Lord did for us before, such as passing under the cloud. Now, Paul wrote this to the Corinthians, the Israelites in, Cor in Corinth back then, but it really wasn't for them. It was for us today to consider. And then when we hit Ecclesiastes 1 and 10, is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. <clears throat> so people outside of this, outside of this faith, when they see chariots flying overhead, blocking the rain for us, blocking the sunlight for us, blocking the snow from us. A lot of our people live in, 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 in colder in, in, in colder climates. Imagine it's, it's a blizzard out there and a chariot flying overhead, blocking the snow. And not only that, that under the chariot is heated up. So it's heating up everywhere you go, melting the ground so you can walk and keeping you warm in, in zero degree below freezing weather. Or those who may be in, 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 in hotter weather. You know, the chariot flying overhead, blocking the sun and probably fanning you at the same time. Nothing is, is, is off limits from the Lord. 
or, or nothing is out of his reach. And the people, it's going to be new to them. But it's not new to us because you got the understanding. It have been already of old time, which was before us. So it's not new to the earth. It's going to be new to this lifetime. To the people, that's going to be a strange thing. But, but the strange things that the people see is going to be what we pray for. And it's going to be what we expect to happen. Because the Lord said, expect the victory and expect the help from heaven. So now we know what to pray for. We know what to hope in. And when there's animals out there, newly created creatures, and you got a chariot flying overhead, that's going to be very comforting. So that's it for this lesson here. Till next time, Shalom.